Today we're going to talk about antibiotic use in low and middle income countries. A low income country typically spends 30, 40 dollars per capita a year on health uh, expenditure, which means that it's considerably less resources than here. Yet many children die from primarily infectious causes that could be cured by antimicrobials and antibiotics. Now, what characterizes low and middle income countries is weak health systems. And that leads to a particular effect I wanted to illustrate today by borrowing these implements from my daughter's swimming class. If these are the people who actually need antibiotics, these are the ones who actually use them. Now, how do they relate to each other? Well, in fact, they relate something like this, that the people who, there are many people who need antibiotics who don't get them. And there are many people who use antibiotics that don't need them. So we have a simultaneous problem of poor access and excess irrational use. Now, there's a small hole in the middle here also among the people who actually use antibiotics but get ineffective antibiotics due to resistance. But the point I want to make is that in a weak health system, there are many, many more people out here that have effectively lack of access to antibiotics than there are people who pro have a problem with ineffective resistance to these drugs. You will find a reading actually putting this in numbers. Now, as we try to do something about this, obviously we want these cycles to overlap. We want to reduce excess use and we want to increase access. What are our options? Well, in Europe, we've looked very much at controlled distribution and use. We have physicians prescribing, pharmacies selling, etc. So why don't we just simply do that? Well, for one, health systems are weak and most people don't see a doctor. And even in the health center, the drugs may have run out. So as a compensation, there's a strong private sector and many go and buy drugs over the counter. So, say some people, why don't we just close the private pharmacies? Well, if we close the drug shops, we will reduce access, which may lead to even more deaths. So, what are our options? Obviously, we need to engage all players and stakeholders in the health system and do a system-wide intervention to make self-regulation, to educate the consumers, and to promote access to effective antibiotics via many channels. You can read about integrated community case management as one such strategy in the readings. And I encourage you to look at Thailand's example of involving the providers, the consumers, as well as the financial incentives to make drug use more rational. So I want you to remember that Lack of access is a bigger problem than resistance in poor countries, that it takes a systems-wide intervention to strengthen the health system. Putting new antibiotics is not enough, just like having a new car does not really help unless you have a road to drive it on. You need a health system to deliver these antibiotics to the people who need them. At the micro level, the individual sick child and patient, but also at country level. Please see the report on how these trade policies and intellectual property rights can actually come to limit countries' effective access to working antibiotics.